Hell yeah. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, I, I don't know if you've ever seen my show before. If you haven't, that's no big deal. Um, I have. I have. You have? Cool. Well, I've you... been watching. I've been watching all of it, too, for Yay. your show today. Hell yeah. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a little bit of a disorganized day, admittedly. Um, <laughs> uh, just because uh, I had some yeah. fan mail and a little story to tell um, and stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, um, so why don't you introduce yourself to the chat and then we will go from there. All right. Well, I am Ann Comics and I am, I'm pretty new to the streaming thing, but I... I decided to try out the hot tub section in, in uh, on Twitch, be the first trans person to do that. And it's been a, an interesting ride, I guess, so far. All right. Um, wait, can, can everybody hear? Oh my God, I'm so sorry if this is, okay, okay, sorry. My apologies, I got a comment in chat and I, panicked because my sound setup's been silly so you've been doing the hot tub streaming i've checked out a couple of your streams uh they seem pretty awesome and chill good choice in music and uh i hear that you've done uh some game game making in the past is that true that is true yeah cool i am uh, a programmer that's awesome that's like super cool um what type of games do you like then or what type of um, games do you like to I... make i should say um I like I like shooters actually like the the bullet hell kind of style shooters. Oh, sick! I'm a fan of those as well as like with with like hybrid sort of things, RPG, heavy RPG elements. I oh, find sick. that fun. That sounds like super awesome. So you you like stuff that's like um, like like a, you said uh, bullet hell shooters with with RPG elements. So maybe like something like um, like Enter the Gungeon. I guess Enter the Gungeon doesn't really have much RPG elements, does it? Hmm. Yeah, that's I do. I do ro love roguelites as well. Like I that love roguelikes too. Yeah, I play as those you could. Are, <laughs> my my first favorite ones. ones. <laughs> yeah, I, I I really like this. Well, so this is super cool, and and also I'm I'm really excited to talk to you because as I'm sure you are more aware even than I, there's been a lot of talk about the hot tub streaming, about the changes that have been going on. I'm super super interested to get your perspective on that. Um, I'm uh, really happy to have you on. And it looks like, I mean, damn, like, it seems like you've had a lot of success with what you're doing. Um, like, your average view count is, is really impressive. I, I was like, wow, damn, like, you're really killing it. So congratulations on that. That's super, super cool. Um, do you want to just talk a little bit about, like, what you like about the hot tub stream format and what your favorite part of it is, stuff like that? Sure. I would say... I mean, I'm I'm using the hot tub format just to get people on my channel. That's really what it's about. It's whatever gets people in there because Twitch is pretty cutthroat and streaming's oversaturated, and it can be really really hard to get get that rolling, like get any sort of of notice. So it's like, why not hot tub stream? It seems fun. Like, <laughs> gave oh, it a yeah. try, and things things really took off fast growing way faster than i ever could have expected yeah i mean it seems and sometimes I, that happens on 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 twitch too it's like sometimes i mean i know that happened for me as well for for the, a long time at the very beginning i do very different content than what you do but um but uh when i first started there was like this this period where there was just like very very small view counts and then you get then like there's it's like something happens behind the scenes you you do something right and then it's like all of a sudden a bunch of eyes on you and it's like whoa what the hell you know i, I was streaming gaming before and my view counts were very very low it's tough yeah gaming but, is, um... is one in which i feel like particularly on twitch like twitch there seems to be a a, a particular difficulty in understanding in like being able to figure out what it is that the algorithm wants and what it is that people want on Twitch, like, it, where, that's not really even the same as on YouTube. On YouTube, there's, of course, lots of shots in the dark and lots of stuff like that, but on Twitch, it always feels like, especially with gaming, even though it's the gaming platform, it's hard to glean exactly what they're asking for from you. Do you feel like that's the case, too? Oh, yes, absolutely. One of my biggest gripes always with them, too, was the lack of good filters. Why mm -hmm. they why people had to create 
um, sites like, what is it, peer, peer-to-peer.live. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that one, but it kind of uh-huh. adds more filters, better ways, visibility for like minorities, trans people, all that sort of stuff. Now that, I mean, now Twitch did add the tags, that's a good step in the direction. And then they also have improved their filters lately, which I saw you didn't used to be able to sort by low view counts. You mm-hmm. could only sort by high view counts. And so that that's a problem when you're starting out. Your People are never going to get down to you. It's like one or two viewers, they're never going to find you because they have to scroll so far. Yes. But there's a lot yep. of people who enjoy the smaller streams and stuff too. So oh, absolutely. I think Twitch is heading, they're heading in the right direction, but there's still, they still need some better, better search functions, some better filters, kind of, better visibility for smaller streamers in general. I agree with you 100%. Um, and in fact, interestingly, because I, I stream on both Twitch and YouTube, and one of the things that YouTube actually does reasonably well is that uh, because of like because they have like a recommended tab on the sidebar, you will often get recommended. If you go and you find like a smaller streamer or a smaller content producer that you like, they'll recommend other people who are like associated with them or who have done crossover contents. So you actually can sort of find a chain of smaller content creators. And I agree with you 100%, by the way, that like there was a huge draw to new and up and coming streamers. There's a lot of fun to be had. I am one of those people. I am like a streaming addict. When I am not streaming, I'm almost always watching a stream. And I love catching small streams. Like it is exciting to me to see what people are doing, to see what people are bringing to the table and what sort of communities are forming around them. And I I couldn't agree with you more that I wish that Twitch would give some more love to the smaller streamers. Um, I, I don't know what their solution is. I don't know what their plan is. It's very hard to understand exactly where they're going especially with UI decisions, um, like you mentioned, where it's like the small streams get pushed down to the bottom, which is just the worst choice ever. Um, But yeah, I am glad there's some third-party tools. Unfortunately, it seems like Twitch has relied on third-party tools a lot. I mean, you even see that with stuff like Streamlabs, right? Um, But yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I um, think uh, what I've seen on other, a lot of other streaming sites too, is when people are new, they give them like, front page like top top of list for a little while sort Mm -hmm. of give them a chance an initial chance to generate fans or whatever get them jump started twitch does not do that which i think they that would be another step they should take yeah um i know that youtube has like the this sort of milestone system where like every time you hit a certain subscriber milestone you get like a small boost in the algorithm that's likely to recommend your content and that increases each one that you cross which i mean that has its own problems but the benefit is that you get multiple opportunities to kind of prove yourself to new audiences and that's so exciting not only is exciting to do as a streamer to encounter those things be like oh wow this is like an opportunity for you to like knock it out the park but also um you know it has that kickstart effect where small streamers actually can break open and and get to a new audience that they didn't you know that they weren't able to reach before yeah so yeah no that sounds that sounds great i think twitch definitely needs to add something like that yeah so kind of making me want to stream on youtube now yeah, I mean, there's, uh, I mean, I, again, I've streamed on both YouTube and, and Twitch. Um, I, I've had a really great experience with that. I have my own website now, um, which will host my stream wherever it is, which I, I am very happy with that, like having my own website. Obviously, I don't host my own stream. That's like too technically difficult um, for basically anybody to undertake right now, at least with the technology that exists. But uh, I will, if my YouTube stream goes down, I can host my Twitch on my website, etc. cetera. Um, so that, that's something that I would, I would recommend to any content creator is to look into like making their own website because that means that you can be, ba- you can never be truly platform independent, but it means that you have a little bit more of a, of a bargaining chip in your pocket for, you know, if something stupid happens. Um, so, yeah. Um, so Absolutely. I'm, I'm watching it on yours right now and I'm I'm jealous of your your setup actually the complexity of yeah. all this and i think it's awesome but well yeah. thank you i uh yeah it's uh my website was is uh run, run and maintained by whiteleaf um which is this just super super awesome uh really small uh company um and uh i don't know i don't know what 
like I don't know how they're like uh, like what their uh, current uh, availability is or whatever. But it would certainly be if it's something that's interests you. I, I highly recommend reaching out to them at least and and seeing if they've uh, if they've got. I mean, I know that they're working on making like a kit that will make it possible for you to basically spin up and host your own version of a white leaf site. I don't know. I don't think they've got that fully set up yet. Like as just like an all in one kit, but um, it's certainly worth considering. They've been wonderful and the tools that they, that, that uh, they provide uh, are awesome. The chat tool, especially like, I mean, we've got all these custom emotes that we've been able to upload with basically next to no issues. It makes it very easy to manage emotes and you can, you get to manage your own uh, subscriptions, all that. It puts a lot of power in the hands of the streamer, which I'm all about that. I always want to see more power in the hands of, of streamers personally. So, so do you get, do you get a hundred percent of the money of people subscribing on yep, your on website? website? Yep. On my website. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah. And I'll see that is, that is awesome. Instead yeah. of them taking 50% like so much better. It was a huge reason for me to do it. Uh, I was very nervous about making the switch, but as it turns out, the switch was actually super easy to do in the long run. Um, there's a little couple of extra steps you got to do, but for me, it's way, way more than worth it. Plus, it allows me to manage my like customers directly. I don't have to go through uh, you know, YouTube or Twitch. If there's an issue or somebody has a question or whatever, they have the ability to access it right there, and I can access their account, their stuff like that. I can manage chat. That way, we can build our own bot tools. So that's something that I really, really, really appreciate. Um, and and on that topic, um, you mentioned like the LGBT tag being added on on Twitch, which took a really, really long time. Um, and uh, I was very, very supportive of them adding this this uh, this tag when the question first came up. I was like in the comments, like I posted like a big argument for why I thought. I don't know that that even made a difference. I don't know if anybody ever even saw the comment. So whatever. I know that's how it is sometimes with these things. But um, one of the concerns that like Twitch kind of brought up was this idea that like, oh, we don't want it to drive more harassment. But the way I looked at it was that the harassment is already really bad. And I don't think that the tag, I think the tag is like preventing people from finding LGBT content, LGBT friendly content creators and not necessarily going to help any of the people who want to harass us from finding us. They already find us pretty fine, um, at least in my experience. Yeah. And I think I have a feeling uh, based on the post that I like first became aware of your content with that you've probably had some experiences with that too. Are you comfortable with talking about that a little bit today? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I I'm well talking about it. Okay. Yeah, no, that was that was due to a a four chan post mm. about me that night where there was uh yeah an, a very long four chan post just basically filled with eight towards me, mm -hmm. hot tub streaming, all that being trans, and it drove a lot of people into my channel that night who had a lot of a lot of things say about trans people and yeah i guess yeah. i guess someone tweeted out about it and stuff it went a little viral and all that but i mean yeah. no well no I, I think a little bit publicity, of publicity i guess that's what i was gonna say i was gonna say once you've hit that level of of, of harassment the least you could do is try to make the most of it um the same thing happened to me uh interestingly it was a uh 4chan poll and kiwi farms um raid um that happened on my 10k celebration stream and completely broke our chat our chat across three sites had to be locked down um and the and we also had to lock down our discord it was just the most putrid hate you can imagine and i have a very thick skin but one of the things i talk about on my platform a lot is this sort of online hate and bullying problem because um i don't it's my personal belief that I don't think that every single trans person who decides they want to make um, make content uh, should have to have a skin that's so thick that it could block an axe. You know what I mean? I don't think that that that. Yeah. And and that's not saying like I'm some sort of special person. I dealt with some some wild shit off of stream that's like in my life that's like totally independent of my streaming life. But I don't think that you should have to be like my level of like, I don't care what people say about me to be able to stream. And I think that that legitimately blocks a lot of really talented people from ever becoming streamers. Um, 
and uh like i guess that like the fact that, that you've also experienced that and basically every trans person i've talked to on this platform has experienced it in one way or another it it almost seems like it's a a uh there's some devoted group on 4chan that just always go they go and find people and then they're just like this is the person we're gonna pick tonight and we're gonna make their life hell for a couple of hours or a couple of days or forever depending on how obsessed they get with you um and it's really unfortunate yeah. to me um so is this something that you've had happen like multiple times like for me we 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 do a check pretty regularly to keep on top of like 4chan and, and kiwi farms and stuff but we've had like sort of a passive background radiation um in twitch chat that's just like really negative and this is something that i like have brought up on panels that i've gone on i've been on a couple of panels talking about exactly this topic where i always call my dms on twitch just the graveyard the graveyard of slurs is usually what i call them because like <laughs> we will get people who come into chat they just drop transphobia and slurs and then they get blocked and then they dm you and then you block them there and report them and then they make another account and there's like no ip ban features on twitch that i'm aware of besides four streamers they know how to ban streamers off the platform but they don't seem to they don't seem to have a desire to be able to block those people is that something you've experienced as well with like the regular like like regular accounts coming back and making alts and stuff like that oh yes definitely i mean just the level of bans nightly and messages my my mods have to really really be on top of things because i'd say probably like depending on the night at least at least 30 percent or so of people uh, or messages need to be deleted or the people need to be banned it's it's a super super Holy constant shit. thing of hate my yeah i mean hot tub streamers get hate and trans people get hate and something about putting those two together is um a recipe for a lot of a lot of hate yeah um that is that is actually shocking even to me like 30 percent like i was gonna say we have like we usually have to ban like five to six like explicit transpho transphobes out of our out of our twitch chat not the site chat interestingly we have a couple obviously who find their way onto the site chat but out of the twitch chat we have to do this all the time but 30 percent is like oh my god that's so much and like yeah like holy shit like again like i know you like i don't want to like sound like like a like a uh patronizing asshole but holy crap good on you for for toughing that out because that shit that shit is draining I'm, uh... <laughs> like um i wasn't i'm i'm very easygoing on that stuff too and i entertain a lot of the the transphobia and stuff because i like i like to address it i guess yeah. you know I'll, I'll call i'll call it out sometimes I'll, it depends on the comment do you uh, do just political discuss content? the topic or oh yeah no i'm i'm my streams are very very heavily political it's a bit okay a bit funny to cool. it so, but I mean I'm a political goes, streamer I'm, so. I'm yeah yes yes I'm I mean 50% of my probably are I'm getting real deep into into politics and trans rights and all those sorts of things that's more so I tolerate a lot on yeah. there just because I think I think that's the way to go is like as far as converting people over you know maybe I've seen a lot of trolls and stuff who've come in there to troll or whatever, then they end up being regulars and that sort of thing. Yeah. Because I'm, I choose to be very laid back about it and joke about it all. And, you know, just kind of try to be as down to earth about it all as, as I can, I guess. And just do that. Yeah. And, and like, uh, so this is, and that's another thing you've touched on something that I've heard a lot and something that I've felt a lot, uh, which is this idea that, I mean, I'm a relatively easygoing person too, but sometimes it feels like you have to be. Like, if you don't, then you are judged or you're you're like, oh, well, you know, there's lots of people who don't understand, so you should just kind of look the other way a lot or turn the other cheek. And it's like, I'm kind of like that by, like, by default. You know, I tend to be like, oh, why do you think that? Oh, yeah, you want to say some shit to me? Come on, say it to my face. You know what I mean? I do that all the time. I'm a bit of a debater. Um, but... Yeah. It's, it is there is it's a it's draining again i do debates all the time i debate transphobes and whatever but it's like but it's like it gets Damn. draining the the expectation 
of uh of like uh of like you 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 have to and if you don't then you're you're like there's this sort of again the background radiation feeling that like oh you're not you're not doing a good enough job you're like uh and some people of course are very explicit about it they'll say things like oh you're doing a bad thing for trans people by not teaching every person who comes in why their transphobia is bad but to me that seems like an unreasonable expectation to place on every trans ta pe every every person who's talent every every trans person who decides to go that path and become on-screen talent and become an actor or or a or a, a streamer or whatever to expect them to have to field every single question to me seems just so unfair and and not just that but also just sad it's it's sad that that's the state of affairs and i i i hope that it will change in the future i i truly do and and uh you know I, i'm hoping that conversations like this can help to open up people's awareness to just how much happens and like that number like 30 percent, like that is that's a travesty that should not be the case you know uh that's yeah. wild um i i agree with all that it is it can be very emotionally draining to do all that but i also i mean i, I don't know how how much i can keep that up long term i guess yeah. we'll see but you know to the point maybe i will get burned out on that but I do enjoy it a lot too, just sort of getting to discuss those issues and educating people and informing a lot, a lot of people yeah. about a lot of issues that they didn't know because I do have a lot of different and interesting perspectives, I think from one being, being post-op, which yeah. is, there's not that many of us who are post-op yeah. and kind of educating people on some of the things in that regard and also having done sex work too, having mm -hmm. come from there and dreaming on Chatterbait and those sort of things and just kind of discussing some of the things that go on there. Because yeah. I actually I weirdly enough, like one one thing I had is I was controversial on on Chatterbait too. And that's because I'm I would stream in the trans section, but I'm post op. Okay. And people, people would basically be upset that I did not have a penis. Is what it would come down to, and I would get hate in that regard from people, which I found a little, a little uh, baffling. I guess yeah, I didn't. That's, I it's think weird. I find that like a, 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 a like outrageous like i mean i understand like you i know obviously you always know where this stuff comes from but it's like it's just it's like what a terrible what a what a what a loud way for people to to scream about this their sort of fixation and obsession and and objectification right like that is to me that seems like a way that uh, like like that, that people can't see they, they don't even see that you're trans they're just looking for one thing and that is I find that just bad. It's uh, yeah. uh, heavy, heavy fetishizing, I yeah. think. And yeah. I mean, the porn industry, I guess, it is that. The porn industry is definitely behind the time in a lot yeah. of things, a lot of terminology that's still located there. Like, there's a lot that, there, there's a lot that yeah. needs work there. Like, I, there's things I like about it, I guess. And it's great that it gives a lot. I know a lot of trans people who, you know, they can't get jobs maybe because they're yeah. trans or what, whatever it may be. It's hard for them. It gives options and ways to make money that yeah. they wouldn't otherwise have, but there's a lot of with it too. Yeah. There's a lot of, I mean, that's, that's something I've, uh, I say pretty frequently. I, f I fucking love streaming. I love streaming, but for all my love of streaming, as much as I love it, like uh, there, there have been two separate, occasions that i know of two separate occasions where i was not present and on a major platform there were uh, there were other content creators talking about my genitals uh, when i was i was not present there was no reason for them to be talking about it but they were talking about my gen my genitals specifically with my name said and everything and this is something that i i'm like i love streaming don't get me wrong i love the art and craft of streaming i love this but why should I have to be, why should I have to be subjected to some random dudes talking about m the state of my genitals? N none of these people who've ever been with me, none of these people who have anything to do with me on a public platform to, to, in both cases, thousands of viewers. 
against with no consulting of me at all whatsoever I'm not even involved and that is an experience that I don't know that like I, this is something that I feel like like you're like one of the only people I think who who could probably understand anything like that you know what I mean like I don't think yeah. most people can understand that concept. I don't think anybody has ever thought about, I think most people have nightmares about anybody seeing them without their underpants or whatever, let alone having people yeah. discuss the state of your genitals um, on a platform with thousands of viewers. It's, it's, it's so weird and it's mind bending because I'm like, I don't know, how, how did I get to this point in my life? Like, what is this? What is this shit? Like, is this, I've never heard of anybody like, I mean, and we're not talking like jokes. We're not talking about like, uh, like somebody being like, oh, I, I, I bet X streamer has a small dick. We're not talking about something like that. We're talking intense conversations about whether they think I have or haven't had SRS about, uh, whether or not it's, you know, it's okay that I, like, it's just, it's so messed up. And it's a thing that I, I think that like people don't, get a lot of the time and so it's something I, I try to talk as openly about as i can without it being awkward you know yeah i yeah i i agree bullshit it shouldn't be the expectation that you have to do that i do it i you know i i have i guess or i at least feel i'd rather educate people on it because more people do need to be aware of those mm -hmm. issues i guess and until until people are educated i don't think it will stop i guess so yeah i i do it i do my best sort of talk yeah. about all those things but it should not it's it is horrible that that is an expert of trans people and it's you know considered okay i think yeah. there's a lot of things like that that are probably deterring trans people from doing a lot of streaming and various things yeah, I, I think there's, I think that like, there is a almost, uh, you know, we, we, we get onto the topic of the concept of trans misogyny, like the idea that like, um, you will simultaneously be denied the, the, your, your claim to womanhood, and you will also be mistreated as, as if you're, you know, a woman in the space. So they're doing both. They're doing like, these people will have both. Like, for example, they'll come into your chat and they'll say horrible transphobic things, but then you then 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 they 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 still harass you. They still say you're a stupid bitch. They still talk over you. They do all this stuff. It's like so like you get the worst of both worlds in that case, and it's just like what the fuck. And uh, I find it something that's like it's incredibly common in a space. It's it's it would be it would be more interesting to analyze if it was if I, if it wasn't so vicious and if it also wasn't so personally you know personal to me but it's like there's this it's like there's this space that's already very very misogynistic to begin with in my opinion like gaming spaces online and i've been in them my whole life i've been a gamer my whole yeah. life literally like one of the first pictures of me as a baby is i've told the story to my chat a million times is like me sitting on my dad's lap on his computer that he built from like parts that he got at his job at a computer factory and like we're playing this old dos game called dgen and like that's that's how long i've been playing games and the gaming world from 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 video games to tabletop still to this day has a huge misogyny problem and then now, they've they've gone from that into a huge trans misogyny problem and a transphobia problem and then you put it onto twitch and it's just like and 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 then you half the time it feels like you're still trying to convince people the problem even exists because half the people don't act like it doesn't exist yeah yeah absolutely agree yeah well um uh with all of that nonsense aside i think that it is a it is uh fucking awesome that um you've been able to have success on this platform in spite of all of that um because it it's uh that sort of touches to something that i've had a like a uh, a motivation and a, and a prediction on which is i think that there is a much bigger audience for uh queer openly queer openly trans content creators out there than anybody believes like I, I uh, have talked about like Oprah in the past. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, like the the history of Oprah, but um, uh, like Oprah, 
you know, I don't, I don't, I don't you know, Oprah's politics, take them or leave them, whatever. Um, personally, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm pretty left and, and, you know, Oprah's pretty hard, hard, hard line capitalist, but, um, Oprah basically wagered that there were women who wanted to watch TV, who's, who were not having TV made for them because it was justified. Oh, well, women don't watch TV. Well, you don't make anything for them. So she had this sort of, if I build it, they will come. And they did. Oh my God, they did. Now she's what, like one of the richest women in the world, if not the richest woman in the world, and one of the most successful television producers of all time. And I think that there's a, there's a, there's something like that for queer and trans people, for LGBTQ people online. Um, do you, is that, is that something you think as well? I feel like we probably are in a line oh, yes. on that. No, I, I absolutely agree. And it is something I talk about a lot on my stream too, that when you look at all the, the top trans streamers or those sort of things, like uh -huh. they're, to me, those numbers are depressingly low to where, you know, some of the, you know, the other people getting 20K consistently, yeah. the, a lot, a lot on the platform. You don't see any trans person even anywhere near that. And I think right. that is, that there's not even one. And I think there is an audience out there for it. It's just, it's, uh, I don't know exactly how to, how to do that, but I, I like the idea of hot tub streaming and doing that because I am reaching a different audience. For sure, yeah. a lot of it. I'm reaching people that have never, never like heard of trans or any ideas about that. There's a lot of in there, and so I, I don't know what the next step is, what other steps are, like how how trans people go about it. But I think there, there's definitely much a much higher ceiling out there yeah. about getting and, and, there. And you know, I think I think part of it is. Uh, there aren't the metrics don't exist yet because m like again it's like the oprah thing the audience there's no way to pull an audience that hasn't yet been made and I, I can't help but feel like sometimes when i look at my stream and i look at my my discord community which is amazing my community i i'm so proud of my community um like just a ton there's so many queer people there's so many passionate queer people in my in my community and i'm like I wonder how many of these people would not have found themselves a community like this, you know, if there, if I hadn't been creating it or if somebody else hadn't been creating it. And so I'm like, we're kind of, in a lot of ways, I can't help but feel that like a lot of the trans creators who are taking these first steps are making that community. We are bringing these people fresh to these platforms from either being lurkers who didn't have an account um, or people who weren't super involved in streaming because they didn't really feel it was for them. These are new people coming into the space. And I wish Twitch would see that and embrace that. I wish YouTube would see that and embrace that and go, oh my God, there's all these people who aren't watching our website. They could be watching our website if we gave them somebody to watch, if we boosted these people so they could find them. And you mentioned like a lot of people who don't know what it means to be trans or what any of these terms mean. That was that was me many years ago. That was me uh, eleven years ago. Um, I don't know if you. I don't know if you know. Again, I I, I don't know how much you know about me, but uh, one of my uh, one of my biggest videos and most successful videos I've ever done um, was about my was called Demon Mama's Spiritual Deconstruction, in which I talked about growing up in a cult. I grew up in a very very far right uh, evangelical cult. And um, as a result, I didn't even, I, you know, I've had trans feelings for my whole life. Uh, you know, I've had these, these, like, this desire to transition, but I didn't understand it. I didn't have any words. I was completely isolated from those words until college. And when I learned that, it was like my life changed. Just, just finding the terms, finding other people were like me, it was mind-blowing. And I think that, like, the internet has made that more and more possible. Uh, for people to find themselves represented in people they see on the screen and but, but but like we got we need more of it we need there are a lot of people out there who aren't reached it was like for me it was like almost chance it was chance that that this thing happened that le led me to le learning this term and m my you know sort of this controlling very repressive very anti-gay anti-trans environment was able to keep me isolated from it because the rest of society was also suppressing these things so I think Absolutely. that's a very important my, my thing. experience is very similar as yeah. well. I yeah. I had those feelings. I also, as a kid, like when I was very young, I made the assumption like everyone wants to be a female. They just aren't 
Me too. Talking about it. It's like, yeah, girls are better, like all that. And like everyone, everyone's bad. They're just not saying it. And so then it wasn't until 13, for me, it was around 13 where things became uh, much more apparent. I guess I was like, wow, I'm really not like my male friends. Like what are, these feelings are not normal. That's when I, that's when I went to the internet and I was like, I had no idea what a trans person was. I was raised in a religious environment and whatnot too, small town. And I, uh, then I found out, I was like everything on the trans. I was like, oh wow, this is me. So then after, after a while, about maybe a year or so of going over it all in my head and I worked up the courage to tell my parents and their, their reaction was to send me away to an inpatient facility in Utah for the summer. So to, to a, I'm I sorry, you cut out there for one second. Could you state that again? To the, Where did they send you? Oh, okay. They sent me to an inpatient facility oh in God. Utah for the summer. Jesus. Like, you know, where, where they told me, you know, you're not trans, you're depressed, those sort of things. So after that, I didn't talk. Uh, I mean... I knew I knew I was still trans for sure, but I was like, all right, I, I can't do this, I guess. And so I have to wait and hopefully it'll get better at some point. And thankfully in college it did. With my first first girlfriend, I you know, I felt guilty. I was like, all right, I have to tell her at some yeah. point. And she accepted me, stayed with me. We were together five years. I'm still wow. so grateful for her. I don't know if I could have I could have ever done it if not not for her having having been there for me yeah, that's absolutely and amazing yeah so that that has been my sort of experience with it all yeah um i mean dan there's a lot of there's a lot of similarities uh, a lot of echoes in of our of our stories uh like say it's, very, it's funny like you you mentioned like i mean i had again i had i had all these like uh, trans thoughts i guess uh leading up to like like when I was like nine or 10 and then I was like, and then I started learning about like puberty and I was like, wait a second. What's the, am I going to, I'm not going to get that one. Like, Oh, Oh, okay. I, I get it now. And then there was this one really, this is kind of funny. Like there was this one time where I was having a sleepover with my friend and we were both kind of like, we'd been playing video games and we were like laying down and just like, you know, you sit at night and you'd sit with your friend and like, you're both falling asleep and you're like talking about your thoughts. And I was just like, you know, you ever you ever wish that you were a girl? And then my friend was just like, you know, what the fuck? And I was like, ha yeah, just kidding. I was just joking. I just wanted to see what you <laughs> had to say. And it was like, oh, okay. So that was when I realized that other people weren't like that. And um, yeah, it was it was a it was a funny moment looking back on it. But like I I for that whole time had just thought that was a normal thing for people to to feel that way, and had no idea that it wasn't yeah. like extremely common. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's wild how not having words to describe yourself can completely change the way you think about yourself, or at least it can, it can lead you to like, I don't know even how to describe it. It can lead you to an incompleteness. And it's like those, I guess that's part of the reason why I believe so much in advocacy and I believe so much in visibility and why I refuse even though it does bring me a lot of grief and uh, like, I refuse to be quiet about my transness um, on my platform is, is, is like, I, I get know. that. Yeah. I get that a lot on mine too. It's like, why, why do you have trans? Why, why are you doing that? You yeah. Stop. Like you can, you can pass whatever people could not know. And it's like, well, I don't, I don't want to do that. Live a stealth life. Like I'm not, I'm not ashamed of being trans and yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's shaped who I am, like in a huge way. It's a part of my life and I don't want to have to be quiet about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel you on that a hundred percent. And it's something I agree with. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I, I spent a lot of my life feeling ashamed of it. I felt, I spent a lot of my life feeling guilty, uh, especially when I was still religious and had just figured out about it and was grappling with that. There was just so much, so much guilt and pain. And then of course, you know, uh, the places that I sort of like was introduced to immediately after coming out was like this filled with this Blanchard, like Blanchard stuff, you know, like that sort of 
there was a lot of the Blanchardianism in, in those spaces. And I was just like, this that made me feel guilty. This idea that there were fake and real trans people, quote unquote, which obviously is total bunk. But I didn't know that at the time, obviously, because I had only had experience with, with that. So it's, you know, it's one of those things I, I, I really respect uh, anybody else who's willing to take that step and say, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be ashamed of this. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There, the idea that like, that you should have to choose to keep parts of you that are that intri that are that deeply important secret is just absurd to me. And I don't think that that's the type of world that we should uh, that we should fight for. You know, I think we should fight for a world that lets people be honest about who they are and not not have to worry about those um those sort of punishments or whatever uh societal punishments yeah um oh, yeah so Adrian. yeah it's uh it's a it's a a strange state of affairs but i don't know i don't know about you but i personally do feel like it's getting uh in, in while there's a lot of negative attention right now in the press and in politics towards trans people i think on the ground it is getting better at least it feels like it to me um there's still a lot of hate to deal with there's still a lot of like pockets but uh, those pockets have always existed. The really hateful pockets are there, but they're not getting any bigger, in my opinion. They're just getting louder, but everybody else is starting to figure out stuff. And and that visibility, I think, is part of what does it, right? There's strength in visibility. If you can see other people like yourself, you're not afraid of being alone. And a lot of the rhetoric of transphobes, a lot of the rhetoric of people that hate us, seems to fixate on making you feel alone. Like you are singled out that you're isolated and there's nobody who can help you and all of that so i'm happy to see that there are other people who are who are refusing to uh to go quietly i guess in, into this nonsense yeah. Um, yeah i agree it is it is definitely getting better and yes i i mean i've as much hate as i've had i can't believe the amount of support i've i've drawn to just the amount yeah. of allies and all that all the awesome who have come regulars on my stream and have supported me whichever ways and I think there's a lot of it out there yeah they're just not always the most vocal or whatever well and I've been I get know... um oh go ahead please sorry um I was gonna ask you on this like here's one I, I get a lot of mm -hmm. people people trying to like I get it on twitch I'm like what do you like what do you there's kids on this platform what do you like what are you doing do you think this is okay for kids or things like that or like kind of goes into when should when should uh kids be learning about these sort of things like such a sex education and just general information on that and i say i say way way earlier than yeah. they are i i heard uh, apparently sweden starts comprehensive sex education and second grade mm -hmm. i think it is and i'm like yes absolutely it should be that soon why why shouldn't kids be aware of these things sooner rather than later i think the sooner you can get a start on it the better i've known i grew up in a town that was all mormon mm -hmm. all mormon and those they are very very repressed and i've seen what happens to kids when they're so sheltered and then they all of a sudden, you know, at whatever age they're adolescent, later on, they get sort of thrust into the the real world, mm -hmm. sexuality, and just everything that actually exists, that have been so sheltered. Then they go crazy. Yeah. That's when they go wild. That's when they, they like, you know, they start doing drugs. They just have kind of sex or whatever. They can go, it can go multiple ways, but that's when they tend to do that, go nuts because... They, they've been so sheltered from it and it overwhelms them and it messes them up. And so I say, yes, it should be taught, talked about way, way earlier than it is. And people should not be worried about the kids like and yeah. being exposed to trans people and that it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, and, and this actually, this is, this is a super interesting topic. Um, because like, I, I mean, first of all, there's so many ways I could approach this. First of all, there's the whole moral panic thing. And, and, uh, earlier this month I did a, I have a, this segment that I do called history mama, where it's sort of like a light 
I, I say lighthearted, but it's always heavy history. But it's like a kind of like um, not super serious, but in depth, like oral retelling of of a hist of a, a piece of history that I find interesting. And this month we've done a couple of them. Um, the first one of which was talking about Stonewall and about the history of queer, like criminalizing queer people in America. And it's a tough topic to go through because it's been so like sort of deeply criminalized. And when you look into why and how they got these laws passed, it's almost always a moral panic. Oh, our children must be protected from these degenerates yes. or perverts or whatever they say. They've got a million different words that they'll use, but it's always this moral panic. Like, oh, your children are in danger. Your your country is children, in danger. Children, it's always the children. <laughs> yeah. Think of the children. And it's like, and it's ridiculous because there's so many wrong assumptions that are baked into that that are just plastered over by this fear by this installation of panic that make you stop thinking about the facts of it it's like oh well did you ever actually are, are any of these people actually dangerous it doesn't matter we have to take care of the problem our children are in danger who cares about the facts we just have to protect them and and that's one of the things i talk about on my channel a lot is moral panics my my chat is probably going to start groaning because i'm talking about moral panics again but i think they're like really 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 uh, important to understanding like how otherization and marginalization ends up happening especially to queer people this this moral panic thing is so part and parcel to the history um and i find it interesting that you touched on that because i mean at the beginning of this month uh on on at least on the politics side of twitter there was this huge discourse over like kink at pride and that also touched on this idea that like um i don't see personally like there's much of a difference between saying oh my god if a if a, a kid sees a trans person on the internet that's going to be bad for them versus like if a, a kid sees a guy in like a freddie mercury leather get up like that's going to harm them just by seeing that or just by knowing that it exists in the world i'm not saying that like you need to take your kid to a like a private club obviously no but like we're talking about a parade here and like there's the same i feel like the same mentality is behind that this idea that like oh don't you know there are children here put yourself away like what no like what are you talking about like there's no harm being done here and and it's interesting because when i tried when when i pressed people who who disagreed with me where is the harm well they struggled to find an answer and it's almost like well did you not think that maybe before you start panicking about it maybe we should talk about the harm maybe we should understand what harm is actually being done but it's almost like they make it impossible to eat like the when I say that, I mean like like the 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 makers, the shakers and movers of the public of the public discourse, whether it's Fox News or 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 you know you could name a, a million of them. But they they don't want anybody ever talking about what actually happens. They don't want anybody actually talking about what happens at a pride parade, what the history of pride was. They just want people reacting out of fear, out of anger, out of the danger of their children. And I find that I I I really hope that we can discourage that type of thinking across this country um, because I, I do worry about the willingness to just forego all investigation in the name of save the children. Think of the, won't somebody think of the children? Exactly. Yeah. We, we have tons of just scientists that speak otherwise to so many of these things, but people refuse to look at those you yeah. know, there's still there's still parts of the U.S. where abstinence only education is being taught. Things like that. It's like we we have all this data, we have this proof. It does not work, but yet they're still still doing it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, and that's the other thing too, uh, which is that like we have quite a lot of information that shows that early sex education prevents child sexual abuse in many cases because. One of the ways that, that predators uh, get away with hurting children is by by acting on the fact that they don't know what's happening to them, that they don't know anything exactly. about this. And that confusion is used to the advantage of the predator. And it's like, do people not see 
this? Do they not care? Like, sometimes I genuinely think that, like, some of these these people who are constantly hawking on about the children, about think about the children, and then they're not willing to do something that actually, for, for all the research that we've ever done, and there's been quite a lot of it done, they don't actually support the thing that actually does protect them, which is making sure that kids know what the heck is going <laughs> on with their bodies so they can make informed decisions when their parents aren't around all the time. And your parents aren't always going to be around. You can't always have a parental figure present. That would be absurd. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Kids, kids, people, people give kids not, not very much credit either. Yeah. I feel like they treat them like they're a lot dumber yeah. than they are. And I think we should give kids a little more credit on their ability, their capabilities to understand things, given a chance and explain them and act according to them the problem is when we just try to shelter them and not give them those opportunities to learn and grow yeah it it, it does a disturb it does a disservice it's like i don't know it's like trying to keep a a baby chicken in the egg forever and it's like no like <laughs> like you have to you have to you have to see the world for yourself and like there will be things that kids aren't going to immediately understand and you're the job of parents and 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 older siblings and, and all these mentor figures in your life are the ones who are supposed to help you understand those things healthily so it doesn't become a fear or a phobia or a or a, a point of pain you know it's like i don't know it's such a strange thing uh not not to change the subject but or but to, or to pivot away but i think this kind of links into the one of the other topics i wanted to talk to you about which is um the there was a a sort of slew of bands of hot tub streamers and if i understand it they created a new section for hot tub streams is that accurate uh i might be getting that wrong like a new area that you file under your stream under um what are your thoughts on that i would love to hear your thoughts like this is this is your wheelhouse so i would love to hear what your thoughts were on the big bands on whether on how they unfolded or is it going to be make it more difficult um you know and for reference like a couple of uh like what like a year ago now almost or, or maybe seven months um we had uh in politics we had a major change to the politics and just chatting rules about what could be shown up on screen what could be talked about and it was very unclear and uh while most people didn't really strictly oppose the change in and of itself like the spirit of the change the wording of the change made a lot of people really nervous and so i'm interested to see if there's anything like that going on here or if it's a good change or or if the bans were justified or whatever because this is something that i don't have the expertise on and you do okay so with the the hot tub section they added that around mid May, and i was doing i started i did my first hot tub i think at the around like april 20th around okay. there and for me the adding the hot tub section was was fantastic because just chatting is way too crowded i went from maybe maybe capping out at like 35 full or so in on my streams hot tub streaming and just chatting as a new streamer to go of a hot tub section my first day i i was around 200 so wow. the amount of visibility i gained due to that was fantastic because it's incredible well as much as people complain about the hot tub streamings and they were they were doing all that the reality is there's not that many of them yeah there's really not that many hot tub streamers out there and so you know it, for those people who who do it it gave us it gave people finally a way to actually find it because that was another issue there's no there's no filter like good filters for it there's no search functions like twitch is very lacking in that regard so it gave people more access to actually finding people who are doing the content that they want so i i think it's a great change for sure i think Fantastic. it helped well some of the the negativity surrounding it too because we're like i you know i don't want to see that stuff or whatever i want no part of it like why yeah. do i have to see that and the you know on the front page or just chatting section of twitch so now you don't have to there it's in a separate section you never have to go to it you, not your thing fine yeah it's it's funny that you mentioned that like there's not that many that was actually um when when the the disc when the, the hot tub discourse started to happen i did a small stream on it where we went and we just fact checked that a little bit 
you know, the people who are like, oh, the hot tub streamers are taking over everything. They're stealing the viewers yeah. from stealing the viewers from my, I don't know, midnight drunken like gaming stream. I don't know. Like we went and checked and did just a little fact check and it was just it's just totally false. Like the idea that any views were being stolen. You go look at the stream charts. It's like there's like one hot tub streamer who even breached the top 200 and it's like. The rest is the same people, exact same people who've been on the top 200 for the last four years. This giant, these yeah. mega giant, highly sponsored game gamers. And it's like, okay, that's not changing. And then like, you got like one politics streamer, Hassan. And like, that's about it. It's like, holy shit. And so like, yeah, it, it's really funny that there's this like, I think people just see a couple of images on the front page and then they associate it with, oh, that must mean that entire segment is all full. This is like, that's so ridiculous. You have to like, again, just do a quick fact check and you'll find that's not true. It's not like anything's being taken over or, or viewers are being stolen or, or anything like that. Uh, my apologies for an interruption, but real quick, I'm just going to welcome in a raid real quick. Uh, welcome to the Hannah Reloaded clan. Thank you very, very much for the incredibly generous raid. Happy to have each and every one of you. Right now, we are speaking to the wonderful hot tub streamer, Anatomics. Um, and we have been talking about everything to do with uh, everything from the so-called hot tub meta to uh, being a, a marginalized person streaming on the internet and what you have to deal with with that to our lives. It's been wonderful. If that sounds like your kind of thing, please get comfortable. Welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you. And consider coming over to my website, demonmama.com forward slash live. You get, guess what? Here's a secret. You can sign in with Twitch and you get access to all of the emotes, including Wide Impo Happy, which you can see flattened out on the side of the screen, but smiling. It may be flattened, but it is smiling. So, yeah, uh, thank you for being here. Very, very happy to have you. Consider joining us, joining all the other imps on the website. Uh, and you'll also probably have a better connection because I think Twitch has been having some server issues today. So, anyway, thank you and welcome um, to all of my raiders. And thank you, Hannah, for, for raiding in. Uh, very, very uh, happy to uh to uh to have you all here um there we go we can resume <laughs> sorry about that just wanted to welcome that in um so yeah no problem. um oh uh yeah so so you had talked about the the uh fact there's not actually all that many hot tub streamers that the hot tub section was like a super super good benefit what do you think do you mind if i ask you or po or, or poke your brain about the, about the bands because that was something yeah. i i couldn't parse what was going on there um and from my sort of outsider's perspective my concern was that this would be sort of that if the bands were too broad that they would become justification to slap down on other people who were just making tan like sort of tangentially related content and like get those people like drive those people off the platform versus like a targeted ban for some specific TOS breaking behavior. What's your opinion on the whole thing? I think there's like Amaranth was banned. I, I think Indie Fox was banned. Those, yeah, the recent ones that were mm -hmm. last weekend, I believe yeah. that we were referring to. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, no, I've, I've talked a lot about this too. Some of my issues with uh, Twitch's terms of service, whatnot, mm -hmm. that it is, I've read through it several times and it's very, very vague. It's definitely intentionally left broad. And to me, that that is a problem. I think yeah. it's a problem because I've had two bands myself and really? I I don't know why I received them. I mean, it, for all, it could be enough to supporting me and it triggers it. I really don't know. And my problem is that I'm, how, how am I going to correct or correct something where I, they won't even tell me why I was banned? Like yeah. they need to, they need to do that. That's a huge problem. And so, you know, Amaranth, Indie Fox, the other ones who got banned, they, they also, it's not clear. There's a lot of theories as to why they got banned. And, that is that is a problem. Why why can't they know? Know why? How are how are we gonna fix it? <laughs> you yeah. know, like, which just seems unwilling to commit to giving people that information. Which I'm I'm not totally sure why. It's obviously and it, it, like by design. They're not uh, competent. You know, they're a big enough company. They're they're doing that intentionally. 
and I, I'm guessing it's because they're they're scared to take any sort of hard stance, so that way they can sort of pivot as yeah. needed. But I think mm -hmm. that makes as long as there's that vagueness left there, people are going to push the boundaries, and like, and maybe that's what Twitch wants. I, I don't know. I'm not really sure what what their thought process is there. Yeah, and and it's funny that seems to be a recurring problem with uh, with Twitch. Uh, one of I've done a stream where we talk about certain elements of the Twitch TOS because I think it's something that you know it, it pertains to every single streamer. Uh, it pertains to all of them. And and one of my friends was banned um, for seven days, which really hurt his income. Um, and there was just no indication by process of elimination. He figured that it was probably because in one of the memes he was looking at. There was this it was this meme about uh that was like poking fun at some person holding a confederate flag and apparently you know there's they have some sort of algorithm that will identify certain images and so he assumed it was that but they never told him they never gave him a timestamp. they never did anything he just got slapped for that and seven days of income gone and a strike against your account that's terrifying as a streamer and to not be given anything to me is just seems so out there and and I don't know. I guess they gain the benefit of being able to just sort of, um, oh, t in fact, uh, another a fellow content creator in my site chat right now uh, says, a tomfoolery show says, I'm permabanned on Twitch and I still don't know why. And this happened, I don't know if you're familiar with this, the, uh, the streamer um, A4 Andre. Um, A4 Andre's super amazing, does, used to do fighting game stuff, now does like Pokemon uh, TCG stuff. Um, Andre was one of like the biggest examples of this where he was banned for a year i believe and and there was just nothing no communication he was like an old school partner had been around forever had a huge channel and it, and it's still it's taken forever for him to even get close to where he was before and that was there was just almost no communication even after attempting to make legal contact and it's just it's just wild it's absolutely wild to me that this is like the norm i hope i i truly hope it changes but i don't know how we change it and I'm, I'm i'm sad to hear that that is sort of more of the same um you know i was open to the idea like you know there's probably i've seen some i've seen some screenshots of of some of the people who are banned that i'm like well yeah that probably is tos violating behavior yeah okay but if they're not giving a citation well, then nobody knows what was at, what it was that actually broke the rules. And that's not good. That just puts everyone in a state of stress, in my opinion. Absolutely. It's been a, it's been a huge source of stress for me yeah. getting those. Cause not only are they on my account, I just, I'm wondering like, what, what do I do to fix this? Could it just happen again? Like I'm investing yeah. a lot in going this route as a, as a streamer and everything. And so like, like the fact that it could just end so suddenly without even me knowing why or breaking any rules but it's it's scary and i think that's wrong they need yeah. to they need to fix that there's so many people who rely on this for their income or their to have that sort of vagueness is unfair to them yeah i i think it's i think it's downright unethical personally and uh, I, I worry because, I mean, it's a simple fact that all, all content creators on Twitch and, and YouTube are, are gig economy workers. We're contractors. We don't have yeah. that legal protection. There's not even much we can do. Even if we were wrongfully terminated or wrongfully had our contract ripped up, they have the right. And it's really unfortunate. I don't know. I don't even know what the answer is. And this is something that I talk about a lot. You know, I do think that like having a website, at least for me, was very helpful because um, when I caught a uh, this was a while ago, I caught a co totally unjust YouTube ban um, after I pissed off some um, conspiracy theorist, a coronavirus conspiracy theorist person, and they mass reported my video I did about their video, their video, which is literally putting out medical misinformation still up has over 90,000 views but my 100 view video um got got it taken down now they did after a couple of days undo that strike which is like cool but for three days i couldn't stream because of my website though i was able to go onto twitch and just stream on twitch and not stream to youtube and then have it go to my website and that was nice but 
the fact still remains what happens if you go to youtube and then you get banned there too for false reasons or you get mass reported four times it's like i don't know it's such a precarious position and i really hope that that changes um for streamers in the future i think that a lot of streamers are going to have to start looking at what of at looking at what youtubers uh you know old school pre-streaming youtubers did to to try and you know make up for that contract basis because i do think some of them found solutions whether it was through making sort of external companies that they make content for and then the company publishes it to youtube maybe that's the answer maybe there's something else that can be done but um who knows it's it's really really it's a really wild unionizing topic. i don't know how realistic that is but maybe <sighs> Yeah, I mean, some people have talked about it. I mean, contractors, I don't really know that contract... I mean, I don't know of many contractor unions or anything like that. Um, and, yeah, uh, but maybe. It is definitely something that I, that's, that's uh, you know, worth looking into. I just, I, I just you know, my I, whatever the path is to have it done, I just want to see streamers with a little bit more um, stability. Because what I see is I see a lot of streamers work themselves to death out of fear that one day it's just going to be gone and they need to have the money that they need to last, you know, until the next job or whatever. And that's a really sad state of affairs when there's so much talent and there is so many talented people on this website who are just making amazing, entertaining, educational, informative, uh, exciting, um, you know, uh, uh, shows every single day. I'm just absolutely floored by what, how much talent there is on this website. I I agree. I think Twitch puts Twitch. I I can't speak to YouTube, but they put mm -hmm. way too much emphasis on their top streamers and just keeping them top streamers and promoting them and all those things. And I think there needs to be they need to do a better job of of promoting other streamers. Yeah, definitely too. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about gaming? You want to talk about gaming? I love gaming. Do you want to talk a bit about it? Uh, what what aspects of it? Oh, what I are don't you thinking? Know. I was just thinking, like, talk about cool games we like and stuff. Just a little chill segment. We've been talking about all these big, huge brain issues. You know, maybe just something a little, a little small brain to just kind of like vibe about some games. Okay. All uh, right. Well, I, there was one other question I oh, wanted to please. ask you too. Please, 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 please. First, what was it? This one. This one came up in my stream last night. And I'm, this this is a a controversial topic. Okay. And like, is it is it okay to say or to like pair groups of people and their their difficulties? Like to say, I think this group has it harder than another. You know, is it is that okay? And if so, where's where's the line there? I mean, it's something I tr kind of try to avoid just because I, I don't really think that usually there's much value in like, in like trying to hierarchalize oppression. Um, I think that it's very, it can be valuable to compare them. Um, like for example, I think that, uh, and I've had an extended conversation with, uh, one of my very good friends. I think that there is, uh, there is a lot of shared and and like like parallel history between uh between jewish people and queer people specifically trans people in the united states i think that the uh the history and the the types of oppression and the way that it's unfolded in america there's so many parallels that i think there's a lot of value to sort of um compare and 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 analyze and talk about these things i don't think it's about who has more or who has less or whatever um i think a lot of that is is sort of uh most of the time just seems to be kind of um like a waste of everyone's time to like to try and say who has more or who has less or or whatever but i do think there's value in talking about the com the comparisons and the differences between types of oppression that people have experienced um i mean uh you know not to not to 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 you know violate the the godwin's law but um you know we, there is like it is a simple fact that that in that in uh, nazi germany you know queer people were targeted super early on and queer people uh, the school that was run by a jewish professor that was the only 
institute at the time that took good, that like was offering health care for trans people in the 1930s uh and 1920s was burned to the ground by the nazis and like that intersectionality that that shared history is super important in my opinion so i think there's value in 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 comparing and 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 sorting through and analyzing these things but i don't think it has to be like a contest or an olympic sort of thing or whatever people say like the oppression olympics i don't like that term but i don't think it has to be anything like that if it makes sense hope that answers the question okay yeah no i like i like that answer i agree with most of what you said there yeah i was um, just curious to to hear your take on it I got very heated in my chat last night over those sort of things yeah um i mean i i've definitely seen that sort of conversation like the heat that you're talking about happen um but again i think a lot of that ends up being sort of like uh again it, it kind of is a waste of everyone's time um in my opinion because uh it, it's just it's just people are just gonna offend each other by accident and then they're not gonna actually gain anything from saying like who had more or who had less. Instead, what do we have shared? What have we both experienced? What can we respond to society together? You know, like what can we respond and fight together and empower each other? I guess that's the way that I would look at it, if that makes sense. Yep, I, I do agree that that is, it's probably better to, better yeah. to unite people that way. Yeah. Go, go that route. Yeah. Yep. That's my general approach to it. Um, so yeah. Um, thank you. That was a, a really, really interesting, uh, question. Yeah. Um, one other yeah. one that I, I get constantly in mind is trans athletes. Oh yeah. I was oh, well, I curious have... to hear your take on that. Cause I've, I've talked about that a lot myself and mm -hmm. up every single night and I end up talking about it. So yeah, absolutely. To hear. Sure thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, um, I there is like this, it's the current boogeyman. Everybody's talking about trans athletes. There's a bunch of bands that are going through. It's a huge, stupid issue. Um, uh, there is uh, no, there is no like credible reason that trans people should be excluded from sports especially when we're talking at the high school level and this is my take my my general take my general approach to this is that okay so first off let's not even get into the science yet let's start with what the purpose of of high school sports is high school sports is not even close to being about competition there is competition naturally involved in sports but there is no uh, there is not even a, barely an attempt you have kids who are who have gone through puberty kids who are in the middle of puberty kids who have like of all different ages all per, all playing sports together sometimes the kid that that had like that went through puberty super early and just like decks the shit out of everybody because he's 10 times as big or whatever like that kid is going to be going up against kids who are like barely even done that so it's not even fair to begin with we don't like the illusion of fairness in high school sports is is that it's just that it's an illusion now there's a couple of little steps here and there that people do to try and keep it within reason but the reality is that it, we don't really over focus on it being like scientifically tailored high school sports is about community it's about team building it's about learning life skills it's about learning how to manage a schedule of practice so you can show up on time it's a it's a manner of learning how to get along with uh people of different age groups with it's about learning sports sports personship sports sportsmanship it's about learning how to be a good a good player all kinds of things it's about life skills that's what high school sports is about so the idea that trans people because they might have because they and this is again without even touching the science let's just pretend that that, that they might have an advantage because they might have some small advantage that they should be excluded from high school sports from learning those life skills which is why we do sports in the first place is ridiculous that's absurd we wouldn't i mean we, we wouldn't exclude anybody else from sports for that reason so that's that's the first thing i think that argument alone stands on its own but once we get into the science it becomes even worse for the transphobes because unfortunately um the science isn't in their favor see uh, trans people have first of all already been competing in the Olympics for a very long time there have already been very reasonable I think it's six months to a year of HRT is like the the cutoff before they consider okay you're transitioned um, for the purposes of sports um, and bam and then and they've had no issues zero fucking issues in the Olympics and the Olympics have been doing this for two decades so uh, so it's just silly the idea that like we, we can't do it and also uh, while um, there have been 
some studies that show minor advantages in in like bone density depending on like how far into hrt you are as it turns out bone density actually doesn't do very much um the bone density is like one of the least impactful parts of of most sports with very very few exceptions and i'm sure that if there's an exception to that rule that we could make some sort of special rule to to make sure that everybody is fair and, and fine in reality um trans people especially people who are on hrt um because of the physiological changes that hrt brings end up being on par with everybody else they're competing with in damn near every single sport and um there was a recent study uh, i highly recommend and i can send this video to you afterwards if it's something that would be valuable for you um it's a video i highly recommend a content creator on youtube uh by the name of jangles science lad um recently did and he is a uh, like a qualified he's a a graduate uh sports medicine scientist um who is like an active bodybuilder and a, and a personal trainer guys super 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 equipped to talk about this he goes through the set the study that was published in december that claimed to have shown some advantages and as it turns out their methodology had a mass has a pretty major flaw in it that has been criticized now it's not that the study itself was entirely wrong or that it was like horrible science, but the questions that were asked were indeed flawed. And you can watch that video. It's about a 45 minute video that explains everything in detail. And you could give that, you can give that to somebody who has questions about it and their questions will be answered from somebody who is actually qualified to talk about that exact subject. And he like lists his qualifications. He goes through it line by line. Super good video. Again, it's uh, it's Jangle Science Lad. I think the video is called like Trans Women in Sports amazing amazing uh video um so i highly recommend that but that's my general that's my general take on this thing is that like first of all 90 percent of the time they're pretend the issue is made up we don't care about nobody cares no one else in the entire world ever cares about competition in high school sports to that degree they are trying to find a post hoc rationalization to exclude trans people when trans people have just as much of a right to access the the team building the social the life skills benefits of high school sports which is the purpose of high school sports so yeah absolutely i agree with all that and i i would like that video and yeah my absolutely. my take on it definitely regarding the high school level is like oh my gosh it's hard enough for trans kids trying mm -hmm. to fit in like you really want to take that that away from them like something that's that silly like that's that is that is horrible yeah it is i think it's thing cruel to, I... to consider yeah if you want to if you want to go at the professional level case by case maybe at at most but to even consider it at the at the high school and college level is just ridiculous beyond ridiculous I to not just you. let those kids have that that little thing like that has that does not matter at all really and yeah. it's so few people as it is too yeah and it's funny there's not too many because there's like, not many yeah and also it's really funny too that like um that like uh you know for example um uh there's you know i'm sure you've probably heard of prager U, for example um, I do a lot of reaction to conservative talking heads. I don't know if you've heard of PragerU, but... Um, I have not. Okay. Well, lucky you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they are a virulently transphobic right-wing propaganda outlet. That's literally what they are. They are a think tank that puts out uh, right-wing propaganda, largely targeted at kids. Um, and, uh, and they did a video relatively recently about uh some person and they had some person who claimed to have been discriminated against or, or not discriminated against but that trans people made it impossible for her to win her track meet and as it turns out if you actually go and look into the story they're like she's just completely lying about what actually happened so she claimed that uh she would have won her her sort of um like uh what's it called the national like the nationals like track meet she would have won but she was beaten by two trans women that's not true she never qualified for nationals she got beaten at an earlier stage by multiple people but she figured that if she did the math and those two trans people hadn't been there who beat her um that she would have been in the top five and would have gone to nationals where she claimed she would have won so it is literally just like 
loser coping that has been spun into a an anti-trans narrative that's completely based off of falsehoods and it's actually wild again this is the level that they have to go to they have to lie and completely make up situations um using just unbelievable mental gymnastics in order to even uh even come up with an example of what could be a problem so again moral panic where's the harm if they can't illustrate the harm i think they should fuck off with all due respect yep totally yep. agree yeah well, totally um, agree. Not yeah. unlike, I'd say, Trump and the election, you know? They yeah, found, yeah. like, what, like, a, four cases of voter fraud somewhere, and, you know, they they use that to make it seem widespread, like it's a real issue. I think it, it happens all the time. Trying yeah. to take just a, they find, like, one little thing at best, and they try and make it into a huge deal. Yeah. And it's all a distraction. I think it's all a distraction, just people bickering on sides and their heads away from the actual issues things we should be attention to yeah i agree uh i think that uh yeah especially the election stuff is like a distraction from the ravages of covid which were absolutely donald trump's fault like like obviously he didn't like invent the disease but like the dude didn't do anything and like they instead made this narrative ah oh, the stop the steal of the vote the democracy is being stolen so they don't have to confront the fact that they, that his actions his lack of action his incompetence with regard to dealing with a pandemic has d damaged the country so yeah uh yeah absolutely um did you did you have any other like political questions you wanted to like shoot my way i'm more than happy to go over them like uh like i love i love taking questions so if you'd like to do that we can do that if you don't no worries um, yeah no I'm, I'm just trying to think of any other one i have i i actually i will say i don't know if you've ever talked to anyone like this but i i know a girl here who might be my knowledge she's the only, or at least one of the only people, because I live in Idaho, too, if you're not mm -hmm. aware, which is a very conservative state. Oh, wow. And she she got to transit. Her parents supported her. She did it in high school, started started hormones, like pre-puberty. And I, I plan to have her on my show, Hot Tub, in the Hot Tub, Hot Tub stream. And... <laughs> to talk about some of those things. And I, I'm very interested to hear hear her opinions on that and some of the some of the experiences I imagine she experienced a lot of a lot of unique unique things there. A, a lot of bullying I'm sure and those things. And yeah. I'm curious your your opinions on that. Maybe if you've ever talked to anyone like that, or just sorry, I think I, I think your your mic might have broken up when you had said what what um did you say that like like she started transition like very early or, or something like that? At, at fourteen, she got oh, 14. her parents. She got to transition in oh, okay. high school. So she Start she had then like puberty blockers or whatever, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Full okay. full HRT, like yeah. all of it at that age. So oh wow, got to transition then. Yeah, um, so to my knowledge, like, full HRT is not super common at, like, a younger age. Usually they start you on um, on puberty blockers, and then they wait until, um, like, a certain age. But, it, of course, this completely depends on your personal biology. So, like, again, that's going to be up to the doctor. But uh, I've had a million arguments about this. This is another one of the things that, like, uh, conservatives are very obsessed with. This is this idea that, like, the kids are getting transed by um, yep. and stuff. Well, first of all, like, um, like surgery, uh, I, I've known exactly one trans person, and I know a lot of trans people. I know exactly one trans person who ever had SRS before the age of 18, and that was because this was somebody who had had uh, debilitating, um, and I mean, like, multiple suicide attempts levels of dysphoria, um, and they were 16 when they got SRS because they were, they were that, they were that troubled by it. And they had a fully supportive family and all, and, and three supportive doctors. And like, like we're talking like a whole thing. And that's the only person I've ever known in my entire life who's ever gotten SRS before 18. And yet you talk to conservatives and they would have you believing that SRS is getting handed out like a Pez, like Pez dispensers. The kids are just walking yeah. up to a drive through SRS surgery. And it's just like, Oh, there's your neo-vagina. Bam. And I'm like, okay, no, that is so far from reality you can't even you just can't even believe it and it's like 
I, it's sometimes hard to even respond because it's so outlandish and so fantastical. They don't even know the basic facts about what, what goes on or how any of it works. Um, and then, They you don't know, even know how, I, I mean, it's crazy how rare that is in general. I've seen estimates where they've said like, there might be as few as 10,000 post-op women in yeah. the United States, which I is, I many. mean, that's, there's yeah. not many. There's yeah. just a handful of surgeons that can do it. Some of them, I think, Marcy Bowers, I saw she has like a five year waiting list. Yep. Yeah, five year waiting wild. list. Like it can get it can get crazy. And it's you have to having gone through it myself, the process, like the amount that they per you, like how many roadblocks are gonna come up with all that, it is crazy. It was every single week there was a new issue and it's it's not easy. It's not easy at surgery. all. Yeah, I there's I... a lot you have to go through that is times you know frustrating humiliating any of that and it like to think that that's just a common thing or that people are doing that without like being certain to say the least or very strong feelings is is crazy yeah it is it's, I, it's I can absurd. say too as a kid i i i did i researched it a lot and i had i almost did it a few times but just just doing it myself because of the amount of dysphoria yeah. I felt. And, you know, like what held me back more than anything was, I guess, the, like, if, if there wasn't the possibility of surgery in the future, I absolutely would have done it. But the fact that there was, it held me back that I was like, okay, I, it would mess things up down the line potentially, and yeah. could be some, some bad things that could happen. And so, <laughs> I, I made, I did seriously, seriously consider it. And so I think yeah. anyone who has feelings like that, you should take serious. Like it's a, it's no small thing. It People isn't. aren't just going to feel like that on a whim. That's, you have some very strong feelings that are not going to go away ever. Yeah. And, 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 and the, the funny like this is the thing like that people just I, I, it makes me so mad and i always have to i always have to check myself when i'm in these conversations because i know again like we said like a lot of people just don't know about it you have to kind of be patient with them even if it's a, if it's horrible but like i uh i should check first if you're okay are you okay with me discussing like this my like a little bit of my experience with surgery are you fine with that Oh, absolutely. Go for it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I, I am, uh, you know, I'm, I'm non-op. Um, I don't intend to ever have SRS. However, I did get an orchiectomy and, um, the orchiectomy process was, was ridiculous. It was so hard. And I had to go to, I had to do two separate psychological examinations to even qualify to have that surgery, even look to even talk to a surgeon. And the person, yep, the second person I, I had to get put me through, uh, like literally, uh, outdated D like DSM, like two or three questionnaires about, oh, did you steal your mother's dresses when you were younger? Do you, did you, have you ever, have you ever masturbated while dressed up? And I'm like, what, uh, what am I, what are you even supposed to say? What are you even, how are you supposed to answer these things? It's absurd. It's inv evasive and disgusting. And that is standard practice to even see a surgeon before you even that's before you even get confirmed or even get to make a yeah. date or even get to do an uh that's just to get your consultancy and that was just for an orchiectomy an orchiectomy yeah. which is a comparatively uninvasive surgery and uh and yeah it's so ridiculous it's so horrible what they make you go through and as it currently stands and these people make it want to make it worse they act like it's just it's yeah. just up again it's that i always use the yeah, pest they're just handing them out yeah not it's like not that. even not even <laughs> no. close to reality not even close and it's like and so i talk you know the thing that i when we talk about stuff like um like puberty blockers and stuff like that i i'm like uh, one thing I like to bring up is is that like uh, this is a a ridiculous double standard that no conservative ever brings this up for any other issue ever. They will gladly just sign off as their kid is put on like something like acet uh, acetone. Is that the one? Uh, acetone, the anti -ac acne medicine. Um, that uh, that like literally, if you if you if you uh, conceive a child while you're on this, the child is almost guaranteed to have birth defects. And this is given to Accutane, Accutane, not Acetone. Accutane, Accutane. Sorry, sorry, I, I got the wrong one. Um, Accutane, my, my, my mistake. I just 
m misspoke. Um, Accutane. Um, Accutane is a a drug that that is so is so dangerous that when you are prescribed it, you have to sign a legally binding waiver that says that you will not have unsafe sex because if you have a kid, the kid is absolutely going to be like fucked up with with regard to genetics like it will actually it's a damaging drug to your genetics and yet that is a s prescribed to kids all the time to people way under 18 and uh and nobody ever thinks second about it they prescribe uh method they, they prescribe amphetamines to children uh with no second thought they have they prescribe antidepressants and the thing is while you could talk about perhaps there are some issues with over prescription that's a totally different issue you you don't have a um you don't have a a uh a freak out about kids needing to like a kid who's suicidal needing to be on antidepressants why on earth would you care about a trans a kid who's trans uh being given puberty blockers which are the least damaging medication you could probably think of they have almost no side effects and, and like so it's one of those issues where it makes me very mad because uh so much of it is it is the most absurd hatred you can imagine fueled by a complete lack of information it's a complete lack of information so yeah i i definitely agree with all that the other one of the other things that i also have a gripe with is the process i think that is horrible i don't know if you've gone through that yourself but it was which process sorry the name change process Yes, I have. Yep. It yep. is. Yeah. I, I don't know how much it varies by state or that stuff that, but you know, the fact having to run an ad in your newspaper, like mm -hmm. many times over having to go into a judge and explain it yourself in front of a group of people, like the reasons for wanting to change your name, all that. It's rather very unfair. You can get married though. And there's there's no problem changing your name then, but yeah. for any trans people, they make it a humiliating nightmare. Like in yes, they do. The um, cruelty is the point, I as is sometimes said. Yeah. Um, I agree. And people, every time I I bring this up from time to time, I really love that you brought it up here because every single time I bring it up, I get a bunch of emotes and chat of people going, "What the fuck? You have to run an ad in the newspaper?" Yes, you do. I had to do this in my closet right behind me. I have the newspaper clipping from when I had to run my name change announcement in my local newspaper. And I'm not kidding you. Yes, you actually have to do that. You have to contact a yep. local newspaper and before they will let you, before the judge will change your name, you have to prove that you made a public announcement. It's like a literal 100 years old law that is only used against trans people. And it is, yep. it so is. Can, so they can come in and people can come in and protest you too. You have to announce your court date. Like yeah. it could, then, you know, there's a lot of, there's yeah. so many issues with that. Yep. In, in many, in, uh, uh, in many, um, states they have changed, they've started to change the process. So I was very lucky, even though my state still had the, the newspaper requirement, they did not require you to actually go into court. The judge would just look at it in private. And unless he saw something that was concerning, he would just rubber stamp it and bam. Um, but yep. I had to go, I had to go in front of the judge and yep. with a lot of people there, there's, there's probably over 30 people in the courtroom when I had to go on the stand and, and discuss that in front of them, strangers That's and everything. Horrifying. That's not, horrifying. Not a great thing. I can imagine, I can't imagine how many people that deters from doing it too. Like, oh, it absolutely does. You know? It absolutely does. I mean, I know. <laughs> Look, I know personal people, I'm not going uh, to say who, but I have people in my life who have not gotten their name changed for pr precisely that reason. Because the, 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 the process of doing so is so painful that it's, it's less painful to just occasionally have to explain why in private, like whisper to a clerk, I'm trans, this is why my ID doesn't match. Uh, look, the eyes. And then that that is less stressful than having to go and do all of this nonsense that they make you do. And they do that intentionally. There are some states that are even that are even worse than that. For example, like a state like Texas, where you can't actually get your birth certificate changed unless your parents go with you to have it changed. You can't change your birth certificate, even as an adult, unless your parents go with you and sign off on it. 
you understand where that might be problem yeah it's it's yeah completely fucked um and unfortunately you... uh go ahead sorry oh are, are you aware of the issues in idaho regarding the birth certificate i don't know if you've heard about I'm, that I'm not, i haven't heard of uh, the specifics to idaho so... no it was it was like a couple years ago, I think like two years ago. I mean, Idaho would not allow you to change your birth certificate, no matter what, no possible way to get it changed. And it became a Supreme Court case, and they they ruled that Idaho had to allow people to change their birth certificates, both name and gender. And so there for like a year or so, they were allowing them. But early on in the pandemic, this was like, uh, April or so of last year, they 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 passed some historic. I mean, this was their focus. They passed some historic anti-trans laws here, including yeah. the, the athletes. And um, they tried to pass the hormones one. Thankfully, that one didn't go through. But they also passed the birth certificate one, which is it's so crazy because it's in direct defiance already of a Supreme Court ruling that like it they're not allowed to they're not allowed to do that and it's they're going to spend like millions of dollars fighting it just for it to get struck down again basically just to just to like repress trans people a little bit like yeah a little bit longer it's all it's absolutely insane yeah and i mean that's the thing that's what i challenge people to look at which is what is the motivation of these types of policies? And it doesn't necessarily have to be the individuals who are saying that they support them because people do get all into their team sports types politics and they'll de defend whatever the Republican Party. But if you look at the, at, at the groups that are pushing these types of laws and you ask what the purpose is, the purpose becomes very clear, which is that they want it to be as difficult as possible for trans people to live safely and privately in public. They want you to be exposed. They want you to be humiliated. They want you to be uh, driven away from being able to exist as a person. And that is part of the reason why I reject these types of rules on their face. And again, for my audience, I remind you from my history mama, do we not recall what uh, un in, under colonial laws, one of the first times that that uh, that anti queer laws were used in America was to uh, order a a accused transvestite to being tarred and feathered and then to spending the rest of their life having to have by a court mandate wear half women's and half men's clothes in order to prove that they were half and half. That was the only way they got out of being out of prison. Ow. Isn't that horrible? That was one of the it's, first enforcements of, of anti law. Yeah. So we have a lot of we have a lot of fight to go. There's a lot of nonsense that's still going on here, but we must, must together resist the urge to fall into moral panics. So yeah, that's a heavy heavy way to to, to top that off. But it is nonetheless the reality it, of our situation. So. Yeah, there's there's a long way to go, especially here in the United States. Mm -hmm. There is a long way to go. Yeah. There's everywhere I think there is, but yeah, there's a lot of problems here for yeah. sure. So. Yeah, and uh, but you know what? There's a lot of good people who are fighting the good fight, and uh, I have a little rule on my stream: we never end on doom. So, uh, uh, I want to just remind everyone that not only have we come an incredible far distance not only have we come very far from where we once were but there are more people than ever who are who are brave enough to exist genuinely sincerely and openly as themselves to become visible for the sake of themselves and for others so that we can so that we cannot be shoved back into the shadows so that we will never be forgotten our history will never be forgotten again there are people like myself there are people like Anne. there are people like uh, jangles. There are people like even ContraPoints. All of these different people who are recording and making a permanent record of of queer history, and that is not going anywhere. That is one thing that has permanently changed. We will. They, they can never 
they can they might be able to put push individuals of us back into the closet but they can never push all of us back into the closet because that that door is open it's never going back closed there are our marks are left all over the world and the and the more willing that we are to preserve and show those things and share those things with other people the the le the, the the less likely a backslide to a worse time will ever be no matter how loud and hateful the uh anti-trans people get so there we go there's the promised, as always, bloomer fuel for after we handle a dark topic. Because I genuinely believe all of that. I know for a fact, I've seen it with my own eyes, the fact that I'm here right now speaking with Anne and having this amazing conversation, that we're uh, like that we're here actually talking about these issues for all of you. What do we have? Like three, 350 viewers on my end right now. I don't know how many you got on your end. I don't know if you're streaming right now. But... Uh, we got a lot of people with eyes on this and you all can take this and share this knowledge elsewhere. So, yeah. Um, that, that felt like, that felt like way too much of a speech. Like, oh my God, but whatever. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So, uh, did, was there any other like political topics you wanted to talk about or, or are you good to, good to shoot a couple quick, quick back and forth about games? Sure, we, we we can move on to lighter. I think I, we did get a <laughs> plenty <laughs> plenty of heavy stuff covered. Yeah, absolutely. So that's probably, yeah. probably good. Um, yeah. So, uh, all right. So games. All right. So first, I gotta ask favorite game. Favorite game of all time. If you got one. Um. Wow, that's hard. I do love the Mass Effect trilogy. Ooh. That's one of my my favorites for sure. As far as currently. I love Path of Exile, and oh, I'm trying oh. to get back into League of Legends again, too. Back no. into form with that. No, not League of Legends. No. no. Uh, run! Run while you still can! Please! League of Legends isn't a game. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an SCP. It's a, it's a mental trap. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Please run um no but 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 yeah uh i i've played a lot of league of legends over the years but i finally kicked it once and for all i've never going back to league of legends not happening um but but mass effect now that i can get behind that's that's cool as hell i i love mass effect uh i never beat the third one but i played the hell out of the multiplayer in the third one and i played i've beaten the first one and the second one like three times each um good good choice in games damn uh, it is. I, I love those. Yeah, they're good. They're good ones. I mean, the the music is incredible, and uh, I don't know. The I, voice I, acting. Yeah. Coleman. Yeah, the characters are really well too. Obviously, I will forever be in love with Liara. Oh my God, I love her so much. She's so <laughs> sweet. Even even with the it's especially after the DLC. Damn. I don't know if you ever played it, but uh, the the uh, oh yeah, Liara. Yeah, it's good as hell. It's good as hell. Yeah. So uh, my favorite game is a game called pathologic 2 um i don't know if you've ever heard of it um i have not it is you don't need to play the first one uh it is basically could be better understood as pathologic version 2 uh it, it is uh the first one is is very good indeed but it, it hasn't aged quite as well so they basically decided they were going to re-envision it and do it over again amazing game you play as a doctor uh in a remote russian town uh trying to figure out uh, oh yeah, I'm talking about Pathologic 2 again. You know it. You know I'm going to talk about this game. I always take every opportunity I can to talk about it. It's my favorite game of all time. Amazing game. Anyway, he plays a doctor in a remote town and a plague strikes. And you have to survive. You have to survive the plague. You have to try and save people. Being a doctor, you do surgeries. You have to try and figure out what's actually going on. You're one of like three people with any medical experience in the town. And it's got, it's like got survival horror elements. It's got these... Uh, uh, I don't know. How do I describe it? Lovecraftian elements involved. It's absolutely amazing. And it's a game that um, I consider it a, a masterpiece. And I firmly believe that 100 years from now, it will be considered one of the, like, one of the most pivotal games of all time. Super, super influential right now. Um, and uh, one of the most challenging and evocative and emotionally involving games ever. Very hard game. Very heavy topics. But... Uh, super, super rewarding, and also just 
beautiful. The art and music is breathtaking. And of course, the characters are, are wonderful. And you can see, if you're looking at my chat, you will see people spamming some of the emotes that are associated with that game. Um, because uh, I talk about it so frequently. Uh, I, 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 I did a review of it on my channel. I, I give away copies of it from time to time because I want people to play it so bad. It's, uh, it, and it is spe it's especially relevant given that we just survived a plague of our own and it talks about a lot of stuff yeah. like that like how to deal with issues of like like what like how do you even survive a a uh, a society changing event and what does that even mean like it's it's a very uh very deep and 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 thoughtful game that makes that like sort of challenges you where you're at and then challenges you to go further and think harder about stuff so i'm a big fan of pathologic too um that's my that's probably my favorite game of all time i just uh, i just added it to my wish list it is it is the steam summer sale as of yesterday or whatever so yeah i have yeah. to pick it up now's the I... time to buy a bunch of games i guess seriously got a bunch i'm probably gonna buy play it you will not regret money. it you won't regret it also <laughs> like i like the music is uh so the the a lot of the music was done by a really really uh famous world music band called theodore bastard um and so you can literally listen to the soundtrack of the game at like as an album on its own like they were also just like we love this game we love this concept like we're going to write an entire album that you could that will be the oh it's 12 dollars right now holy shit yeah that's yep. awesome Team bucks. summer sale everything on steam is on sale right yeah. now so. hell yeah um it's it's just it's so good so goddamn good um and then yeah uh, and then as far as like multiplayer stuff, uh, you know, I used to play league, I'm a recovering, uh, league addict. Um, and, uh, but, uh, these days I play, um, I play magic, the gathering online. I play apex and, um, it doesn't count as online, but there's online elements. So I play lots of souls games. I am a big fan of souls games. I've played, um, on my, I, like me too. Oh yeah, which one do you like the most? Oh, this is gonna be a contentious topic. Uh oh, uh oh, here we go. What's your favorite? Dark I mean, Souls game? I, I like, I like Dark Souls the most. That I mean, I the the, another one that I really like is Salt and Square. I don't know oh. if you played that one. It's yeah. like, like a two D Souls so one, and I I love that. My partner is a a a Salt and Sanctuary super fan. Like like I've got him. Yeah, so good. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Sekiro on my list soon too. <sighs> that's that's maybe the next one i'm gonna go through sekiro is so good so goddamn good. sekiro yeah 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 i couldn't i can't recommend that enough like it is it is something else the thing about sekiro is that it is definitely a souls game but it is it is like i don't know it's like the difference between like uh like demon souls and dark souls 3 like imagine that step that's like the way that it goes they just they they change a lot of the way that the game is played but the core elements are still there like getting the souls like the way that you get items and like the way the boss fights kind of unfold but there's like a ton of three-dimensional movement there's uh like that works really really well the combat is like very um instead of being dodge focused it's very like parry focused so you're encouraged to like get up and personal and like really test your metal against a lot of the characters in that game it's just oh it's so good i love sekiro so I much i suck at parrying i've always been a dodger so you, you, I guess me too be you're gonna learn experience. it yeah you're gonna learn yeah. it it'll teach you it will it does it does a very good job of that i was uh by the end of the game i was like wow i'm i'm pretty i feel like i actually got better at all all of the other souls games after playing this personally my favorite though of all of the souls games is is bloodborne but it's not it doesn't have souls oh, in the title i was title, gonna so. say that i'm i'm waiting for the the bloodborne port still waiting yeah. for that i don't think it's ever gonna happen sadly but so you um, haven't played the original yet can't play it oh what? my god you haven't played it on playstation yet I, no, nope. I'm oh waiting for God. the port. I, I don't have a PlayStation or console or anything. Oh my God. PC okay. Master is. <laughs> Listen, don't don't wait. Find a friend who will loan you their PS4 yeah. and play the hell out of it. Bloodborne is, in it is. I love Sekiro. I love Dark Souls Three. I love me Dark Souls One. I love I love me my my Demon Souls. Bloodborne. That is the shit. It is the it is a masterpiece. It's probably my second favorite game of all time behind Pathologic, and uh like. I can't praise it enough. It's got everything you could ever want out of a game. It is the horniest game in the entire universe. Um, especially, 
yes it is okay that's all i'll say um it is an amazing game beautiful amazing music awesome characters the weapons are un unmatched and yeah you gotta you gotta don't wait on them it might never happen you gotta go find just find a friend yeah. who's got a ps4 and pester him so good yeah it's also a visual feast I'll for you guys I, that. I, yeah it is so good uh i i uh if i've i've said many times that i would like lo i would pog out of my mind my my I, I would be pogging out of my gourd if uh if they were to announce a dark souls 3 remake that was built with the combat rules of bloodborne because of how intuitive and and snappy and wonderful B bloodborne feels but but demon mama bloodborne does not have a pet dog button are you sure about that are you are you really sure about that I think like half the game is technically petting dogs. It's not your fault that you're petting them very forcefully, okay? A lot of werewolves in that game. Anyway, so yeah, cool. Um, yeah, well, we've been talking now for like almost two hours. Uh, and thank you so much for coming on. This has been a absolutely pleasant uh, conversation. Um, do you want to uh, real quick give yourself like a, a full plug and shout out and, and all of that? Um, I'm sure my my chat will be itching to, to give you some follows and and uh, and feedback and stuff. Yeah, no, I thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate that. It's it's been nice to do a uh, be on stream and not in a hot tub, I guess, for a change. As much as I like that, it is nice to have a little break from that. But uh, yeah. yeah, if you guys do want to follow me on Twitch, I'm on there most nights pretty late. That's that's kind of. Bad where I found my crowd, I guess, the late night people. But uh, yeah, I'm in the hot tub on there and it's it's an interesting, probably different kind of hot tub stream than you've ever seen. And yeah, come by and check it out. It's usually pretty fun. It's very political. Hell yeah. Well, we're all about <laughs> that. You're like going to gonna find a lot of love from in that front. I'm a, I'm a, I'm chained to the politics. I can't escape it. It's all I do with the, the politics is lurking behind me at every minute. But yeah, that's my, uh, that's definitely what I deal with. So you'll find a lot of politics lovers in my chat. Well, and thank you so much. Uh, everybody go give, uh, your follows, uh, on Twitter and Twitch and beyond to anatomics, twitch.tv forward slash anatomics. Um, and thank you so very much for coming on. It was absolutely wonderful. Apologies about the early technical issues. Uh, it was just wonderful talking with you. Thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, uh, hopefully, and I'm sure we will speak again in the future. Um, I hope you have a wonderful yeah, day. Thank I you so much. Actually, I plan on messaging you a few questions about some of your um, setup there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Please do. I, I have I'm a more lot than happy to now. learn. I'm still new to it all, so figuring yeah. things out. Uh, here's a secret. Me too. Uh, streaming is like yeah. everything is done with bubble gum and paper clips until you find out something that nobody told you, and then you go, "Oh my god, this makes my life so much easier," and then something new breaks. So that's how it always goes. <laughs> well, and, and thank you again so much, and uh, we'll speak soon. Okay. Sounds Bye good. Now. Bye. Bye. What an incredible conversation. What an absolutely incredible conversation. Holy moly, that was just great. That was just fantastic. Was that not just absolutely fantastic? I thought that was incredible.